Good evening from BBC London News. The mother of an 11-year-old girl who has a life-limiting illness is being warned her daughter may be taken into foster care if she fails to cooperate with doctors at King's College Hospital. Croydon Council says it's taking the legal action on the advice of the hospital, which claims Melody Driscoll's parents are obstructing her care, but they claim they're acting in her best interests. Here's Mark Ashton. A 17-year-old from Croydon has admitted carrying out a series of acid attacks against moped riders in the capital. Derek John targeted six in one night to try and steal their vehicles. Chris Rogers has more. The government has announced new powers to tackle the sale of unsafe laser pens which can cause blindness. It comes after an increase in incidents targeting train drivers and pilots, particularly at Heathrow Airport. Here's our transport correspondent, Tom Edwards. Next, the campaign to save the historic India Club on the Strand. It was set up in the 1950s and became a popular place for South Asian expats. But now it's under threat from developers, as Wendy Hurrell has been finding out. OK, that's it from me. Time now to see how the weather's shaping up with Stav Deneos. How's it looking, Stav? Good evening from BBC London News. First tonight, it's claimed that a healthcare company which employed a care worker who stabbed a 90-year-old in her home was told she had a previous conviction for assault. Pamela Batten's family say they're extremely angry and are considering legal action. One charity has told this programme the home care sector is in crisis. Yvonne Hall reports. The new Justice Secretary has announced a review of procedures following the ruling to release London taxi driver John Warboys. The decision to free the serial sex attacker nine years after he was sent to prison prompted anger from victims, some of whom found out through the media. Well, Frankie McCamley has more on this. Uh, an understandable concern. Well, yes, absolutely, Riz. Now, uh, one of the main things that went wrong following this parole board, board hearing was how the victims were told. Now, what we know is that these victims uh, that were involved in the trial were either notified via letter, email or phone call those who received letters or emails, some of those didn't get through for one reason or another and they found out through the media. Now we've also heard from one of his victims today, she didn't want to be identified but she spoke to the BBC and what she's demanding is an answer and to find out exactly why Warboys was released, what was around this decision. Uh, she said that the law must be changed and she's asking uh, for this transparency and she says, and I quote, until that happens, we can have zero confidence that he won't reoffend. So now, with a new Justice Secretary, uh, has anything changed? Well, in the comments, we did hear from the new Justice Minister, David Gork, and he echoed the statement made by his predecessor that he's ordering an urgent review within a report by Easter into the transparency of these decision-making, uh, the decision-making process, and exactly how the victims are told. Um, and now, although that will be welcomed, this doesn't really get to the heart of what most of these victims are concerned about, and that's his release date. They were wrongly informed by the police that he would be released after serving around 10 years. Years, uh, but now they are facing the prospect that he will be released. Okay, Frankie, thanks very much. Frankie McCamley there. Next, should parents of premature babies be given extra time off? Around one in every 13 is born at least three weeks early. Now, one London borough is believed to be the first employer in the country to give extended leave to parents to care for their newborns in hospital. With more details, here's Tolu Adelier. It's fair to say a trip to the circus these days can be a spectacular sight with acrobats and cutting-edge visual effects. However, the attraction has a long history which started on the South Bank here in the capital 250 years ago. Wendy Hurrell has the story. Quite a sight, isn't it? OK, I'll say goodnight now and it's over to Stav for a check of...